What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chadish. We are back at it again with yet another event update. You all know what it is. It's that one and only time out of the week where I get the opportunity to give you guys an update on what's going down. If anything has changed, you all know. Okay, so check it, though. Event updates, they're going to come and go as I throw it out there. Obviously, I try to uh, bring out the regular content as I can, but when we have a, a, a game-changing update that is, is definitely... Well worth mentioning, I'm going to try to go out of my way to make you guys a video to let you guys know what are the ones to watch. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through the list of stuff and I'm going to basically just point out the ones to watch. As you guys know, you can you can follow me uh, by going to the events section and checking out the monster update. But obviously there's there's so many updates that I don't want to spend the whole time. I just want to go on talk to you guys about things that I think that are going to uh, make some, you know, pretty decent changes. So um, going down the road. Um, I, I guess, you know, first and foremost, uh, for those that are fortunate enough to get, um, the, uh, Desert Queen, uh, you got yourself the, uh, some of the skills there that reduce down, uh, really, really nice to have, you know, for those that aren't familiar, Desert Queens are, are one of the few units out there that do have the tower, attack power reduction on the first skill. You see a lot of people doing, um... You know, obviously, a violent revenge is nice, but you see a lot of people actually doing like a double revenge um, with a with a third, with a second uh, subset, like a double revenge nemesis or or, or something of the sort. Uh, but generally, like a double revenge easily because it's it's so important to get that attack break on on the uh, on the boss after the uh, jump, especially the third jump. So uh, for for those that are rocking the double revenge, any any kind of cooldown reduction to any of their skills, let alone these three, um, are always good. And I believe the water one, and uh, I see I see the water one uh, used quite a bit in the arena, or sorry, in the uh, rifting. So yeah, buddy. Um, now Anubis, uh, I don't know uh, how viable that's going to be. It is nice to see um, the you know some of the changes on the like the passive of the fire, um, some of the changes on the damage. But you know overall, um, with what I've seen in the videos from people testing, um, the damage multipliers. Uh, you know, even, you know, at, at that particular time, they still weren't extremely strong. I don't know how much, you know, an 11% damage to their um, brand of hell or a 20% damage to the soul devourer. How much is that going to do? But the, uh, but the good thing is that some of them do have not just the damage improvement, but the reduction. So again, they're trying to make it viable for you. Um, so that's pretty darn cool. So moving on, moving on, we got ourselves, um, uh, some of the mummy updates uh there's been a couple of people that have been fortunate enough to get some of the more unique uh mummies i have uh gotten the dark mummy so i i do like this um damage increase by 21 percent and by 15 percent um, the dark mummy for me has both and it has the passive that uh, in, uh increases damage based on the amount of um hp that is lost it, it that's additional damage so the fact that these two both get a, a nice little jump of, of damage and then, of course, the Dark Mummy has another way of bringing damage. Uh, makes me want to actually six-star the Mummy and just have fun with it. So, maybe you guys see that down the row uh, to see that getting tested. Uh, and then you got yourself a uh, Fire Mystic Witch. Uh, a little bit of an approval from Recovery Mouth. Um, so, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. You know, a lot of people threw this outside. You know, people threw this kind of out to the side. Uh, but, you know, people don't realize that, um, you know, cleansing um, at the early stages of the game is probably not like... The most important thing in the world but you know depending on, on on what you're available to get you know cleansing is nice now that being said you know let's 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 you know adjust the elephant in the bag you know there is no better free to play uh cleanser than than kona mia so even though the fire mystic witch is nice and it has an interesting kit um i still recommend kona over any other unit out there that's you know in that three-star category as far as um you know cleansing goes if you're looking for some kind of unit to cleanse now um salamanda Salamander. So yeah, we got ourselves uh, uh, damage that are based on not just uh, attack power, but attack power and defense. So that is good because if you guys have seen, uh, there is a trend going on uh, with, especially with the light salamander. The light salamander is uh, one that's being used in the rifting uh, for the R4 and R5 uh, because of its passive, the inability to um, get CC'd. And then you have the, uh, as, again, the attack power uh, break on the first turn. So people are stacking it with triple revenge to make sure that that attack power gets knocked down on that third jump. 
Uh, and again, guys, if you guys haven't been playing around or had the opportunity to play around with R5, you know, the big thing about R5 is, is you know, from R4 to R5, it's not a huge change, but the, um, you know, the, the, those jumps, you know, it's, it's, it's even more crucial to get those debuffs after each, you know, of those jumps, especially that third jump. So if you can't get it off the third jump, you know, nothing else matters. You can have the most perfect run in the world, uh, but that third jump attack break, um, it has to be there. It has to be there. So I like the change um, on the Yetis. Uh, it's always nice to see a little bit of improvement on units that, you know, kind of people, again, don't, you know, you don't really see use all too much. So for the people that are leveling up Yetis, um, beginners, any of you guys beginners listening up, um, I'm a big, big fan of the Fire Yeti, Tantra. Um, a, a very interesting skill set. It has a couple of skills uh, that are based on max HP, and then it has an ability to uh, put a shield on and then heal you, um, you know, for three turns. So, or heal over time or whatever. So, really interesting kit. Uh, if you are new to the game and looking for just like a fire tank, I do like the, the fire yeti. Um, I have seen some people out there playing around with the dark yeti uh, for the uh, uh, necro necropolis. Um, but of course, as far as that goes, I mean, it's a it's a tank based unit used to provide the slows or whatnot. You're not going to see a lot of people going out of the way to use it for damage. But that being said, it's always worth mentioning. It's always worth mentioning. So next one up, we got ourselves a little uh, a little change uh, for the Water Phoenix, a little bit of improvement on the Ice Volcano, which is always nice. So anybody that has the opportunity to uh, everybody and anybody, right, that has the opportunity to fuse the Water Phoenix are going to get an opportunity uh, to improve their damage uh, with regards to the skill. Um, next set of skills, next set of skills, um, the Assassin. So Assassin, the uh, uh, some improvements here, changing the defense, increasing 25 to 50. I think that's pretty big. Um, that's probably going to be the uh, um, the ones to watch there because there's certain Assassins uh, that people are using um, in the Rifting world. Um, you know, you just got to, you know, you got to find out that you might not see it all the time, but if you look at uh, uh, a certain assassin, right, um, you can you might find yourself uh, it it has some value um, to the rifting world, right? Uh, branding is a really really nice skill. A lot of people don't uh, use it all, but the ability to improve um, the damage you do by twenty five percent for the rifting party is obviously uh, a very strong skill. So keep that in mind when you're looking at a, a, a particular unit that you want to bring in your party that can still do what you want to do for damage but then also improve the damage uh, especially for those r4 speed runs for those that are trying to improve their speed so let's see here next one up uh, some of the skills have been changed uh i guess everything that is uh um you know in here is you know relatively nice but i think we're gonna have to stick to the ones the ones to watch here the the, the big noticeable changes here um so Big one, the biggest one by far. The biggest one by far is obviously the Dragon Knights. Um, you know, it's it's crazy. You know, I, and for those who guys have been following the channel, following everybody's you know YouTube and, and streaming you know channels for quite some time, you know, the Water Dragon Knight is probably one of the knights that has literally been um, been criticized for you know how bad his AI is. And so, you know, excuse me, I'll say it again at the end of the video. Um, a big shout out to Com to us just for being one of the few companies out there that really work with their their users uh, in an effort to improve the game overall. I mean, none of these changes would have been made if it wasn't for your guys' feedback. So, yeah, don't ever say that they never do anything for us. Uh, yeah, buddy. Okay. So, Dragon Knight's original skill from Torrent got changed to Justice. Justice and is, is an extremely strong um, damage dealing skill. Uh, for those that have like it, know exactly what it can do. And so having the ability to uh, do damage uh, with that particular skill versus the Torrent, um, since he has the hit point uh, buff, um, it's really, really hard for him to get down below 30%. Because if you guys didn't know Dragon Knights, after the turn, they uh, increase by 50% health. And so it's extremely hard to get that uh, ignore defense skill on the Dragon Knights. So I truly believe that you're going to see a lot more water Dragon Knights being used. Uh, with these big changes, because it just, it just changes the it just it's a game changer for that unit. So big big stuff. Um, Fire Sea Emperor, Fire Sea Emperor, definitely another one to watch with regards to this particular one here. Um, any ability that provides CC for you, and then sorry CC you know CCs the opponent denies the turn of the opponent, and then on top of that, 
um, increases your attack bar uh, by 25% um, is extremely strong. And when I watch the Fire Sea Emperor, uh, you know, generally, uh, if he attacks, you know, whatever, three to four units, I generally see him stun at least two, if not three. So we're, we're looking at almost like a 50 to 75% attack bar improvement on this particular skill. What does that mean? That just means uh, another a, a way of basically able to, you know, move straight through those uh, straight through those skills and uh, get the opportunity to cast more and more, you know, early on, depending on how you're using them in the Guild Wars. You know, getting those extra turns right away uh, could be extremely strong, and you know, depending on the synergy that you bring with regards to your team, the makeup or whatnot, um, could be good. Uh, you know, a lot of people out there are making Guild War defense teams that generally have one threat. So now, you know, making a combination of um, teams with a threat and this one i think it's going to be out there i think people are going to use it because uh, again people are going to have to pick and choose what they want to do uh, as far as they go so we got the towers uh nothing really crazy to mention there in my opinion i mean there's a lot of um uh things here i guess let me let me take that back i'm sorry i apologize so the fake attack is is probably the one to watch there uh, instead of increasing rate by 30 um 30% you got the decrease on the target attack power. So um, it is it is nice if you're trying to Bring a different type of unit for um, The rifting right? Okay, so if you guys like I've said it before Rifting is all about debuffs, uh, especially when we're talking about r4 and r5 So it looks like they're trying to provide you guys more units out there that can uh, give you the uh, attack power break on on the second turn. So I I, I personally am a, a little pretty excited about this because the t the Taoist, uh really don't get used all too much. I see I see the wind one uh, get used a little bit and tee away hard. Um, you know I played around with that. Um, you don't see the fire one being built whatnot. Maybe the wind in the water um, and the, obviously the light one gets used quite a bit. Um, but now the fact that you have the attack power break, it's going to be strong. It's going to be strong. So. Let's see. Um, the sacrifice on the pass of the fire sofa, I still don't think it's going to... I mean, it is nice that they, they have it activate from continuous damage bomb damage, but it's still not going to uh, make people, you know, grab it out of the monster box, in my opinion. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the leader skills. So this is great for all of you guys that are coming on board. Um, why do I feel that this is great? It's because right now we have ourselves just a handful of leaders uh that are, are are you know have universal leader skills and so you know for the people that are trying to get into that rifting and trying to provide leader skills for the teams you see it time and time and again people are making these raid teams they're asking for people to join them but they're looking for specific leader skills right they're looking for speed leader skill hit point resident leader skill defense for uh leader skill resistance leader skill you know they're looking for those th those big four and so the fact that now they're taking some of the more common units, right? They're taking some of the more common units um, and, 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 and giving them leader skills so that you guys can have um, something to provide for your friends when you do the rifting is uh, second to none. So again, um, another friendly reminder, <laughs> you know, big shout out to Contos for doing everything and anything to improve your guys' gameplay. You know, not only did they uh, provide... You know, two Death Knight AOHs, the second night obviously being out there to uh, give you uh, more skill ups for your Briens, your Diaz, your Fedoras to improve your rifting experience. Now they're giving you leader skills, so you have more of a reason to use some of these. Um, obviously, um, the big ones out there um, are going to be the resistance and the defense. Um, but that being said, um, you know, obviously the attack speed is nice, but. You know, Conrad seems to be more of a PvP kind of one. Um, I, I feel like that the skill set is based on more PvP, but the the other uh, and, and of course the um, the Fire Knight is, is is a little bit more on the PvP side too. But the Wind, Water, and Dark um, are definitely going to be one of the three three more used ones with regards to rifting. So you're going to see a little bit of that. Um, now I'm you know I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I know this sounds kind of weird. This sounds really kind of weird. But I was I was surprised that they they kind of um, um, they kind of buffed up on the they, they kind of duplicated uh, the leader skills. I would have liked to see a little bit more um, variety. You know, maybe busting out an HP lead um, in there. I mean, you got two units, uh, you know, defense, and they got two of them in the resistance. You know, I would have liked to see 
uh, the HP lead um, in there somewhere. I know that they would have to, you know, balance out all the leader skills that they provide for the game, but um, it would have been nice to have it out there. And maybe they do, right? You know, there's been so many times where these notes have been written incorrectly, where it says it's defense, and then when we get the change, it's HP. So I might be, you know, eating my own words, but uh, hopefully they got an HP lead or something like that. Um, same thing with her Shaxas. Um, you see here, out of the all of the Rikshasas, um, it is really nice because, again, uh, for those that are new to the rifting road, I mean, uh, Rikshashas, the fire Rikshasha is probably one of the most highly used Rikshashas in all of the game uh, because of his attack bar manipulation, uh, and it does work for the, uh, the rifting world. So, um, you know, you got all these different units um, that uh, provide a nice little skill set with their Rikshashas, but... Um, first and foremost, the fire one is going to be the, the, the most, you know, the ones to watch because of the fact that it's, um, you know, it manipulates the attack bar, re reducing the amount of turns that that uh, dragon has so that you can, you know, get more turns in before, you know, the counters go off and they trigger their different uh, variety of skills. So uh, now, all in all, um, again, they kind of did the same thing where three out of the five have an attack power increase and uh, the other two have a critical rate increase. Again, uh, I like the additional leader skill. Um, I don't know if it was uh, absolutely necessary with regards to this unit, but if they're going to incorporate the leader skills in the future, hopefully, and hopefully I'm wrong where this is just reworded wrong, where they just bring, they just provide um, a little bit different um, uh, leader skills, you know, in there. Um, obviously, uh, I, I, I will, I am grateful for, for having the opportunity to have more of a choice now, um, but, you know, got to put it out there. Um, for those people, you know, trying to, you know, balance the, the game overall. So, um, AI of the monsters. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, so, here's the deal. I don't even know what to think about this anymore. As you guys know, when I read this next line, you guys already know, when I read this next line, um, I had to, like, stop what I'm doing uh, and make this video. And so, funny enough, I, I, every once in a while, I'll tell you guys, you know, what time it is. I'm turning around 6.22 in the morning. Uh, the baby and, 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 and uh, my wife is asleep, so I'm like, oh, got to make a video. Uh, when I saw this one, okay, so the Water and Dark Beast Monk, the defense skill. For those that don't know or new to the game, the defense skill is a skill that is put on a unit that prevents all damage to them for three turns and then uh, puts, you know, it does half the damage that they would have taken onto the Beast Monk. So it's, a, it, it's an extremely OP skill when used offensively. Um, but you don't see too many people use it defensively because of the fact that unlike its water and fire, um, you know, brothers, um, the skill was being used at any given time. Whereas the, the wind and the fire skill, which heals somebody instead of puts the, 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 the defend on the hug skill on, um, they would use it, uh, when the enemy is, uh, the enemy's, uh, hit points is low. So this is kind of weird for me. Um, because I think, I think it's, I think it's going to be fixed, but I think they just must have reworded this a little wrong. The AI would no longer use the skill when the monster's HP is low. Now, right now, at this current state, if you find a, a Chandra in the arena defense or whatnot, his first turn might be defend and just putting defend on a unit's, uh, skills on a unit's, uh, HP, or sorry, they'll put defend on, on a unit regardless if it was low or not. I mean, I've seen them put a, a, a hug on somebody that had full health. But then that particular unit, they put the skill on. Out of all the people that were full health, it had the lowest health. So what did it do? It told the opponent uh, exactly which unit was a squishier one. So um, I'm hoping by the wording of this, since it's not going to put it on a unit when the monster's HP is low, that maybe it'll stop from doing that. Um, but again, it's, it's one of those things where I'm curious to see how it's going to work. I'm hoping that they just worded this wrong because I would like to see the skill only be put on when the unit's HP is low, right? I want it to be a death prevention skill. There's no point in having him put on there uh, if, if it's not going to, you know, it's not going to improve, um, you know, it's not going to improve the use. So um, here we go. Uh, a big, big unit. Again, another one. So watch right, right below the beast monk. You got the fire and the dark nine tail fox, but let's go ahead and put the, uh, put the spotlight on the fire nine tail fox. One of the most commonly used necropolis units out there. Um, uh, being able to provide a, a five hit skill set with a branding effect on his third turn with a three turn cooldown. In addition to having the three turn first attack on the second one. So, well, what does this mean? It's not going to use the enchant skill on the on the on the dungeons and bosses. 
this means that it's going to roll. It's going to roll straight through um, the Necropolis people out there. Uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be rolling straight through the Necropolis boss because it's constantly going to be using multi-hitting um, units and or multi-hitting attacks. So for those that are trying to improve the Necropolis things right now um, that don't have already a Ninetale Fox, I highly recommend now, I highly recommend now, it's already been used, but it with this change in the AI, this makes the Ninetail Fox um, improve drastically. Going from using uh, three different skills that have you know three, one, and five on the on the types of hits versus just three and five, that's huge. And then having the ability to have the violence that on there to get those additional turns, extremely strong, extremely strong. Um, Violet Revenge all day, um, you get it going, and then of course uh, because there's so many great units out there um, in the fire category. You got Roke, you got the Brickshasha, you got uh, Adrian, the Fire Elf. Um, you got so many units out there that, that, that you can make a mono element team for. Um, definitely get it out there. Obviously, you guys know Colleen for one of the best healers out there. So for those that need that that team, the fire based team now is extremely is extremely OP now because of the fact that um, the Ninetail Fox is going to make it easier for you to, to reduce the uh, the shield on the boss and then get the job done. So um, let's see here on the rest of the skills. Um, I want to see. I'm trying to think here. Light Oracle. I didn't see. I mean, obviously that's such a rare unit. A lot of people are not you know using it and whatnot. So um, that one didn't really stick out to me. Uh, and then of course the the revision of the skills. Uh, oh, skill description of the skills got uh, got revised a little bit. So taking a look here. Uh, didn't see anything uh, that stuck out early on. Let's see here. Just just basically, even though it, it already did what it what it does, it just rewarded it. So now now that it makes a little bit more sense to the people. So uh, let me take a note here. I didn't see anything else. I was looking for. Everything looks more or less the same. Again, it's just it's just the the actual skill description change, not the actual skill set. Um, but it looks like they did fix. Um, some of the skills uh, down below. So here we go. Uh, overall, in this at this particular category, uh, I didn't see any any crazy changes. Now it's funny because I take a look at this Dragonite, the Dark Dragonite. Um, uh, let's see here. The Dark Dragonite skill has been changed to receive an attack bar increase effect if at least one of the multiple hits land is a critical hit, which was nice because if you had units that are, you know, having multiple hits, they'll hit critically hit. Uh, the first time, but then the third time, you know, it doesn't critically hit, then they won't change. Uh, now, I, I must have missed it uh, way early on here, but uh, the Dark Death Knight uh, made a drastic improvement here. Here it is, yeah, the Dark Death Knight made an improvement. Attack bar increased effect from 10 to 20%, so this will be a little bit of a pain for some of the people in the high end of TOA hard. Um, and then if you're, you know, a beginner intermediate, you'll have some hard times if you see this one in the high end of TOA normal. Um, but uh, as you can see right down there, I must have missed it early on. Uh, a nice skill upgrade for the uh, Dragonite is cool to see that improvement. And so I'm curious to see what kind of combinations uh, in the PvP world uh, people uh, go ahead and use. I think that'll be, I think it'll be very interesting. So overall, guys, um, you know, again, what what a drastic change to some of these skills. Uh, you know, most notably um, the water, the water Death Knight. Or sorry, the, the water dragon knight has to be the one out there that just you know night and day changes to something that's going to be useful. So um, again, for all those that are listening, for everybody you know in the come to us community, um, my hats off to you uh, for taking the opportunity to listening to everybody's um, positive and negative feedbacks. Uh, you guys, without a doubt, are one of the only um, companies out there that truly listen to their fan, their their their, their community base, uh, looking to approve your game. I believe that is. One of the biggest reasons why you guys are doing as good as you are today, in addition just to making a high quality game. So again, my hat's off to you. Thank you for everything that you do for this game and the community. Uh, that is it, guys. Thank you all for tuning in for this um, event update, the big monster ballad change. Uh, take care. It's your boy Childish and Childish Plays checking out. We will see you in the next event update. I'm out.